work with Aqua Security. Um, we help enterprises secure their cloud native deployments. And I look after the open source tools that, that we build there. Uh, and I have been involved in, with kind of containers and container security for, for quite a few years now. Uh, so earlier this year, uh, I published the, this book with O'Reilly, Container Security. Uh, you can you know, buy this from all good bookshops, um, but you can also download a free electronic copy. So if you follow that link, um, you know, don't let price be an obstacle if you're interested in, in, you know, in the material that we're covering. So these are the different areas that I kind of have prepared that I think we can, we can talk about. Uh, we have a poll, so maybe we can open that poll so you can start voting on these options. And while you're voting, I'll just very, at a high level, talk a little bit about these options. So they're kind of in the order of things that you can do at build time through to, um, you know, at the end, things that happen at runtime. Uh, for most of these, I have some demos so we can uh, uh, explore which ones you, uh, you know, we can, we can dive into them. I, as we go through each one of these topics, uh, let's do Q&A about that topic because they're all quite different. And uh, yeah, so just go ahead and vote on whichever thing you think looks interesting to you. Secrets. When I'm talking about secrets, I really mean things like credentials that your application code needs in order to run effectively. So you might have application code that needs um, database credentials is really common. You might need um, tokens in order to communicate with some other service within your deployment. Those secrets might give you access to, you know, giant swathes of data that needs to be held confidentially. But I'm really just talking about those. I'm not talking about the mass data. I'm talking about the credentials. And ideally, you know, these, these are secret credentials. You don't want, you want to limit access to those secrets to as small a number of people, possibly no people for production and as small a number of uh, containers, as few places within the system, uh, you know, just limit access to the secret to the places that really need it. And if we're talking about containers, quite often it means we want secrets to be available just to one kind of container running a particular microservice or, or application. So, all the time that your secrets are, I mean, your, your secrets will exist before and after they're actually injected into the container. And you want them to be encrypted. You want them to be unaccessible to you know, unauthorized people and unauthorized applications, both while they're in storage and also as they're moved from wherever they're held into your container. Now, I'm going to assume that we're using Kubernetes because I think in, in this kind of in today's world, most people running containers are using Kubernetes. The same kind of principle may apply depending on other secret storage mechanisms. And uh, Kubernetes has a native uh, implementation of secrets. So a lot of people will be using that native, you know, a secret is a first class resource in Kubernetes. So that's great. We can use that. What people maybe don't know so much is unless you have taken steps to encrypt those secrets, by default, they're unencrypted. So let's see. Let's have a look and see whether I have any. This is actually slightly annoying. I've got uh, Zoom occupying the top line of my screen, so I'm going to just have to uh, do this. There we go. OK, I just have a default service account token at the moment. So let me create a secret. Create secret. I'll just create one of generic type. I'll call it my secret. 
and uh, I will just give it some literal um, my key equals some secret value. I think that's everything I need. Great. So now if I get secrets, I've created an, an opaque secret. Uh, I can retrieve that secret at the moment. Now this relies on me having role-based access control permissions to, uh, to see this. Uh, I'm just going to output the data that we're interested in. So what did I call it? Mm. Data. I think this is going to be my key like that. Yeah, helps if I type an equal sign, not a dash. Okay, so I've got some something that looks like gibberish. That isn't what I passed in. But if I just pass that into uh, base64. code. I can see my secret value. I hope everyone is aware base64 encoding is not encryption because there's no key required. Anybody can just decode. This. I, I don't need any secret knowledge in order to decode a base64 encoded piece of string. So there is a secret. It's stored somewhere in Kubernetes. I need uh, role-based access control in order to, to get that, but there's nothing about the way that I'm retrieving it that means it's encrypted. Now, if I root on the machine, I can look at the, uh, the etcd database, which is storing all our data, and that includes the secret data. So this is going to be a binary file, so it's not going to be pretty, okay? But let's see if we can find my secret in here. So I can, and uh, we can see, for example, that it's probably the default namespace. Uh, here's some information about it. Oh, and, uh, you know, here's some, uh, where's my secret value? Let's look for some secret value. There we go. There's my key, some secret value. It's really not been encrypted at all. So anybody who can get to the host machine with root privileges, which is mostly anybody who can escape from a container, not that that's easy, but if you were able to escape from a container as root, if you can just go to this etcd database, and look for secrets like this, you can get all the secrets from the whole cluster, which is not great. You don't want to be one step away from somebody obtaining all of these credentials. So let's quit out this ugly file. What can we do about it? We can uh, use, and let's just quickly switch back to my PowerPoints. Uh, so we can use encryption configuration on the API server. So I'm going to set up a YAML file that is essentially like this that says, I want to, oops, sorry, I want to encode secret resources. I'm not going to, sorry, I want to encrypt secret resources. I'm going to use a key that's stored in this configuration file. Uh, and it's up to the, it's actually Kubernetes that's doing this encryption for us. So let's see that in action. Um, so if I go to Kubernetes manifests and I look at the API server configuration, and I've kind of prepared this earlier, so this shouldn't be, this is, I don't have to write that encryption YAML file. Now, just changing that YAML file is all you need to do. The kubelet will pick up the fact that I've changed the configuration and it should restart the, uh, the API server. Let's just check 
that it is running because I think I've talked for grep. Okay, so it is running and uh, we should find, yes, there's the encryption YAML that it has picked up. So let me create another secret and uh, I'm going to give it a different value. Value, and I'll call it my other secret. So now I have three secrets, the default service access token and the two that I've just created. Let's uh, have a look at that database file again. And if we search for my other secret, here it is. And we can see, well, we can see a lot of gibberish. There's some information here telling us about the encryption information that uh, was in that configuration file. And if I search for, what did I call it? Different secret value, let's... Uh, Different secret. Yeah, that's not there in plain text in the etcd directory, which is great. The only thing to be aware of here is that um, the encryption configuration file has the secret. So if I am root on this host, it's all well and good me saying I, I can't just read the secret out of the database, but I do have access to uh, the, uh, let's see if I can find the, there we go. If I can pick up this configuration file, I can get hold of the secret. So I've made it slightly more complicated, but, one of the ways to deal with this, one of the, the sort of, uh, ways you can avoid this is having your etcd database stored on a different machine so that it's not right next to the configuration with the secret information on the API server. This is one of the reasons why using other solutions to manage really, really sec you know, important secrets, things like HashiCorp Vault, are certainly worth considering if you're protecting something of very high value. As I say, it's, it's a big step for an attacker to escape a container. It's not like everybody can just access a container, escape, and then have access to your host. That is hard, but it can happen. Vulnerabilities happen from time to time. And if it happens, you don't want to have easy access to all of your secrets.